I mean, Abdi says, would love a teardown video of the new PS4 Pro CUH7200 to see why it's quieter than the launch model. Well, I mean, you're in luck, because here at Tronic Fix, that's what we do. Here's the PS4 CUH7200. Let's get it torn down. So the first thing on this new console I would like to point out is there's actually not any warranty stickers. This is actually very surprising as pretty much all of these sorts of electronics come with warranty stickers, though the FTC did finally crack down on this and it looks like Sony is actually complying with the FTC's requirements. So now there is no warranty stickers on the back of the PS4 Pro. There are just these two black stickers, so we need to take those off, see if there's any screws under there, and then we can get the bottom cover off. Now I do want to point out that you can see when you've removed these, so Sony will know if you have taken these stickers off, and maybe the reason for that is so then they know when someone's been inside a console and they can look a little bit closer to see if there's anything they've done that might void the warranty. They don't have the void if removed text on there, but you can still see if these have been removed. So with that cover removed, we can see that this looks pretty close to the same as the previous model of PS4 Pro. So we need to get it torn down more and see where that extra cooling is coming from. After all those screws are removed, the power supply comes out. The part number for the power supply on the 7200 PS4 Pro is ADP300FR. So we'll take off all the antennas and all of the ribbon cables and the fan connector. Now we'll remove the hard drive. The hard drive is a Toshiba and it's a one terabyte. This PS4 Pro is in the Red Dead Redemption bundle. Now we need to remove all the silver screws from the outside and inside of this metal plate, and then we can remove the plate and have a look at the motherboard. And here we have the first look at the motherboard. Now let's get the clamp off and then we can pull out the motherboard. To do that, we need to remove this screw and this screw. Then we can remove the clamp and the spacer. Now that those are off, let's get it out and see our first look at the fan, the heat sink, and the thermal paste. I also do notice these are just normal thermal pads. I don't see any differences there. And here we go. The thermal paste is not as dry as a lot of these new consoles I see. It looks to be the same as usual, but I can't tell for sure. It may be a different kind. It may be just that this has been manufactured recently enough that it's still fresh and not dried out, or they could have a different formula that stays wet longer. It's hard to know. So let's get that cleaned up and then we'll remove this bottom plate. So, so far no major differences. I do still see we have the copper heat sink here surrounded by aluminum. So let's get that all off and take a look at the inside. Now let's see if we have a bigger heat sink or a bigger fan or what we have. And here we go. The fan actually looks to be the same size. The heat sink almost looks to be a little bit bigger. Let's compare this one to a previous model. The PS4 Pro has three different models. There's the original version, which is the 7000 series. This is the next revision, which is the 7100 series. And then this is the most current one that you get in the Red Dead Redemption bundle, the 7200 series. Now looking at the 71 versus the 7200, I see very, very few changes. I see a few um, changes in the amount of air circulation that goes right here. I'm guessing maybe this is to direct air right through the heat sink when it goes through the fan. I'm not really sure about that, but that seems to be what might be the case. And then just a few other changes, but nothing really significant at all. Nothing that I would contribute the better cooling on this model 
with. So let's turn them over and see if there's anything different on the other side. Now here is the most surprising thing of all of this so far. This is a 7115 series, so this is the older model. This is the newer model. Take a look at the large heat sink on this model versus the smaller one on this model. There's a much larger area that this takes up than this. So just this alone is telling me that I'm guessing they've made the 7215 model just much more power efficient and therefore it's not gonna get as hot and therefore you don't need quite as big of a cooling system. This one, even though this is this large piece of metal is so much bigger, but it still doesn't cool as well as the 7215. So I'm guessing that this, the 7215 is just a lot more efficient and therefore just takes less power. Let's take a look at the motherboards and see if there's any clues there. Here we have the 7100 model, and here is the newer 7200 model. Now looking at these, I really don't see any difference. They're pretty much exactly the same. Now that being said, there are a few little changes if you look on here versus on here. Some of the chip configuration is a little bit different. One thing to take note of is the Bluetooth Wi-Fi chip is different on these models. So if your controllers stop connecting and it's not any sort of Wi-Fi antenna problem, then this chip is a lot of times what needs to be replaced and it is different on these boards. So if you have to replace that chip, then you will have to make sure that you get the right chip for the right board. Now the models on the motherboards are different, NVB003 for the 7100 model and NVG001 for the 7200 model. So obviously there are some differences and for the most part, I'm guessing that you're not gonna really be able to tell the difference just by looking. I'm guessing that most of the changes are in the software or in the main chip right here and possibly some of the other chips, but it's just not something we'll be able to physically see. Now that all being said, let's turn it back over and look at the top side. Looking at the top of the motherboards now, I don't see any major differences between these two motherboards. This USB chip is definitely smaller in the newer model. Battery configuration is a little bit different, but for the most part, the rest of it is very, very similar. So unfortunately, I can't point you to any direct reasons other than a more efficient motherboard and probably a more efficient APU chip on the newest model of the PS4 Pro. Let me know in the comments section why you think the newest model of the PS4 Pro runs much cooler. And also let me know if you guys want to see me do a heat test on this newest model in the comments section below. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you guys have a good one.